All right, so for this week for nonlinear controls, we're gonna do a, uh, a quad. Um, instead of doing an airplane, I just figure uh, it'd be good for final project stuff. So let's, uh, let's break the drone down to as simple as possible. So first, we're just gonna assume that it can only move in the Z direction and it's got one thrust vector T, okay? And so basically our, um, our input is T here and our output is Z and this is our plant and we wanna control the thing. Now we're not gonna be able to get a plant obviously because it's a nonlinear system, so we're just gonna look at the nonlinear dynamics here. Um, this might actually be linear uh, at least the altitude dynamics, because we're gonna we're gonna neglect drag drag, because a quad is basically just a, a, a brick with uh, motors on it. So uh, so let's do a Newton's equations of motion. Some of the forces is mass times acceleration. So the left hand side, you're gonna get thrust minus mg is mz double dot like that. And then um, if you put this in a fine form, you're gonna get um, z dot v double dot equals um, z dot, that's just trivial, this is just for MATLAB, and then you're going to get a, what, negative g plus zero one t. And here are your equations of motion. Oh, this is one over m. So in this case, they aren't necessarily nonlinear. Um, so you could put them in a, uh, you could get a transfer function and you could get state space and all that. But for now, let's just leave it in a fine form. Um, the one thing though is that on a drone, at least when you're flying it, you can't control thr uh, thrust directly. Um, what you actually do is you send a microsecond signal. That's a PWM wave. So you're gonna send a square wave to an ESC. And an ESC is gonna route power um, from the battery, and so that's going to create, you know, some some voltage to a motor, and then that's going to go to. I, I could make this as complicated as possible. You're going to get like, you know, propeller dynamics, and then you're going to get aerodynamics, and then from there you actually get thrust. But anyway, um, you know, we could we could put a couple more blocks here, but the idea is that eventually you get thrust. Now, you can make this as simple as possible and just say that T is just equal to some thrust coefficient KT, and that you get from a bunch of different data sheets, um, times a microsecond signal minus mu min squared. And so if you plot the microsecond signal input, typically when you uh, turn on a transmitter on a drone, the, the minimum microsecond signal is, um, is it still recording? Oh, I can't see the dot. Okay, the, the minimum microsecond signal is usually around like 900. Sometimes it's 1100. But basically it means that if you kill a throttle, the drone won't stop. We'll, we'll give you no thrust and thus that's T equals zero. And then as you increase, typically it's like 2100 on the transmitter, you'll get thrust and it's quadratic. So you get this equation here. And so what you can see here though is that this actually end up, this does end up being nonlinear because if you want um, your system to be mu, right, into G and then output is Z, um, T is no longer, you know, some linear function now. Now it's uh, T is T divided by KT square root plus mu min, that equals my microsecond signal. So if you want to, plug in thrust, so I mean you can solve that, that's fine, but if you want to plug this into here and get mu as your input, you have to, you have to do it like this, you're going to get z dot, z double dot equals z dot minus g plus, and now it's no longer 0, 1 over m, it's 0, and then you, you actually can't even get this in a fine form anymore because what happens is that typically a fine form says that you have z dot equals f plus g u, where you use your input and g is, is not linear but you multiply it by u. In this case, u, mu, the input, is actually embedded into this complicated function. So you actually have to leave it as kt over m 
mu minus mu min squared. And this is your, your system, okay? And so that gets kind of complicated on what to do, all right? So I'm gonna take a picture of the board here. watching this on YouTube, you don't get my notes just because uh, that's a, a perk of my students who actually uh, are in this class and registered and paid tuition. Um, you're getting the lecture for free because I'm doing these classes online. Um, so anyway, so what you have to do to feedback linearize this is you actually have to do two steps. So you actually have to keep T as your input, feedback linearize the system, and then solve for mu on the back end. And so uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going to just redraw this. And I'm going to say you've got Z dot, Z double dot equals zero. Oops, sorry. Z dot negative G uh, plus zero one over M T, and so you have to you have to feedback linearize this, unfortunately. And uh, since the top row is trivial, you can actually just bring this down into a one D, and you can just say negative G T over M like this. And so you can feedback linearize this by saying I'm going to let T equal M times G plus gamma, okay? There is your feedback linearized system. And, and remember, let's just do a review here. So if you have uh, x dot equals f plus g u, what you do is you set, you let u equal one over g uh, gamma minus f, okay? And so in this case over here, um, f is negative g, uh, and that's actually kind of complicated because g is gravity. So let's use h over here. So I'm going to say f plus h u. It's going to be 1 over h gamma. Okay. So f is negative g, and then h is 1 over m, right? So then if you plug this in, 1 over h becomes m, and then negative f becomes positive g. So there's your uh, feedback linearization control law right there. Um, so if you plug this in to here, what you get is you get z double double dot just equals gamma. Okay, and at that point you have z double dot equals gamma, so you can just make uh, gamma whatever you want. And so uh, the easiest thing to do is make it closed loop stable, make it second order. And so if you just let gamma equal uh, z double dot command plus, let's see, I'm sorry, minus uh, kp z, I have to get this right, z minus z command minus k, kd. Uh, z dot minus z dot command. And again, this is assuming full state feedback. If you make this gamma, okay, I'm going to need to get a new marker. If you make this gamma, what happens is, is that if you plug this into here, your closed loop dynamics becomes z double dot minus z double dot c, because this comes to the other side, and then that is basically e double dot plus kp. Let me, do, let me bring the kd over. You're going to get kd z dot minus z dot command, and that's basically kd e dot, and then you bring the kp over, z minus z command equals zero, and you get kp e equals zero. And so those are your closed loop dynamics for a, uh, for a drone, uh, at least in the altitude. So again, so here are your um, altitude dynamics, here is your control law for with the pseudo control in here, and then here is your pseudo control law right here. And then again, this is just going to this is going to give you thrust. And remember that mu, your actual microsecond signal, is going to be um, mu min plus the square root of t over m kt. And so if you're simulating this on a computer, you can just compute t 
uh, and just send it as a force to your system, that's totally fine. But if you're actually building a drone and you want to command the ESCs, you actually do have to do this last conversion at the end. Okay? So this is just for the altitude dynamics. I'm going to upload another video for the rotational dynamics and then another video where you combine it all together. Okay? Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I guess post in the comments if you have any questions.